Welcome to the Rapid Change Magazine installation tutorial. Choose a location on your machine to install the magazine. The only requirement is that it be aligned along either the X or Y axis. Here is a model of my machine bed in Fusion 360. Use the mounting pattern DXF file to create tool paths in your CAD software to bore or drill the mounting holes. If you intend on using a stick out of over 24 millimeters, the through holes in the bottom of the magazine will have to be extended. It is recommended that the holes continue through the bed. This will allow you to use drill bits and longer end mills. If this is not an option and you need more than 24 millimeters, you can raise the magazine by machining an adapter plate. I set my work offset to X0Y0 and milled a pocket point 5 millimeters deep aligned along the X axis at the back of the table. I bored holes through the table for the pocket recesses drilled and tapped the mounting holes. Then I bolted the magazine in position. Now that the magazine is installed, we are ready to configure the tool change parameters. Whether or not you use Mach 3, the setup covered in this tutorial is universal across platforms. It is invaluable to understand the dynamics of the Rapid Change ATC magazine. In the top right corner, you will see the configuration section. As you can see, on a fresh installation, there are no options selected and all of the values are zeroed out. To be fully functional, all the values need to be configured. Before we begin, let's make sure we are in millimeters. Our tool change script for Mach 3 requires all values to be in millimeters. I will select the x-axis for alignment and negative for direction, since pocket 2 is in a negative direction from pocket 1 along the x-axis. Let's leave the tool setter tool recognition, and dust cover disabled for now. We will cover these optional settings in another video. Now let's select the number of available tool pockets in your magazine. I will enter 5 as my magazine uses one pocket for the tool setter. Since this is an ER11 magazine, I will enter 38 millimeters for the pocket offset. This would be 40 for ER16 or 45 for ER20. The speeds and feeds being configurable allows you to tune the threading process. When picking up a tool, the clamping nut should move neither up nor down in the magazine while being threaded onto the spindle shaft. So there is a relationship between the feed and speed. If the nut gets pulled up out of the magazine while threading, the feed rate is too slow. Conversely, if the nut gets pushed down, the feed rate is too fast. However, when dropping a tool, the clamping nut will be pushed down in the magazine. Acceleration is also a factor. In my Mach 3 motor tuning, I have Z set at 200 millimeters a second. A low setting will be undesirable. The following ratio is for my setup with an 800 watt spindle and ER11 collets. I will set the engage feed rate at 2400 millimeters per minute. This is the feed rate at which the spindle will plunge to engage the clamping nut. I will set the RPMs at 2000 for both the pick and drop speeds these two values will generally be the same. Feeds and speeds for other combinations of spindles and collets are available under the installation menu on the website. Feel free to play with the spindle speed as it directly relates to the torque applied to the clamping nut. However, it is not recommended to exceed 2000 revolutions per minute for any size spindle collet nut combination. Make sure the machine is homed before moving on to the next section. Since I milled the mounting pattern with my machine and my work offset has its origin at the center of the magazine, I can simply move the spindle to X57Y0 as this is 1.5 times the pocket offset of 38 millimeters from the center of the magazine along the X axis. A simple G90 move and I am at the pocket one position in X and Y. At this point, since I am set up in millimeters, I can simply push the buttons for both the X and Y magazine references. If you are not in millimeters and try to use the buttons, you will be prompted to switch. You will have approximately 0.1 millimeters of play for the X and Y references. I prefer not to stress the machine with more math than necessary by rounding off to two decimal points as this is more than accurate enough. Now we need to find the magazine reference for the Z engage height. This is the lowest point in Z that the spindle will travel, both picking and dropping the tool. Move the spindle clear of the magazine. Bring the spindle down so the bottom of the shaft meets the spacer provided with your magazine. 
This position will be the Z and gauge height. Since I have recessed the magazine 0.5 millimeters below the surface of the table bed, I will subtract it from this value. The tolerance for this position isn't as tight as the X and Y position, and depending on the geometry of the clamping nut, it may need to be adjusted slightly. Now, find a good height for Z to traverse the magazine, keeping clear of other tools after dropping a tool and moving to the next one. Set this position as the Z traverse height. If you do not have tool recognition installed for your magazine, it is best to set this at Z safe clearance. I will use my G28Z position of 140 millimeters. Now let's set up the tool setter. Enter 50 millimeters for the set tool offset. This number will get you close, but we will go over the calibration once we have the rest of it set and tested the input. The tool setting function does a double tap seeking at a higher rate of speed, backing off a few millimeters, and then moving at a slower feed rate to actually set the offset. I will set the seek feed rate at 300 millimeters per minute. I am setting the retreat distance to five millimeters. I will set the set feed rate at 100 and max travel at 40. These numbers are general and you may choose to set yours up differently. Now let's set up the tool setter references. The center of the tool setter will be 38 millimeters from pocket one, as it has the same offset as the tool pockets. So adding 38 to the pocket one location for X gives us 309.86. Y will be the same location as pocket one, as it is in line with the rest of the pockets. Z seek start is the height at which the probing will begin. I will set this to 75. Z safe clearance will be the height at which it travels to the tool setter. Keep in mind the longest stick out you will use to make sure the tool clears the other tools in the magazine. I will use 95. Now that we have all of these values set, we can use the macros. Click, go to XY pocket one. This will raise the spindle to safe clearance and move to the pocket one location. Now click on go to Z pocket one. This will slowly bring the spindle down to seven millimeters above Z and gauge. From this position, you will be able to visually check the centering accuracy of the spindle to the clamping nut. From here, you should be able to move Z down one millimeter without touching the nut. If you notice that this move depresses the nut, then X and Y are not lined up properly and you will have to make some fine adjustments until there is no contact at this position. Once the spindle shaft is aligned properly, Move one more millimeter down and the spindle shaft will begin to depress the nut. Now move Z up a bit and click Pick Tool. A window will pop up asking you which tool you want. I will choose Tool 1. This button performs the same as the M6 call and will set the tool height now that we have that set up. So let's make our first tool change. Since we have not enabled the tool setter, we get a message asking us to enable it. Click OK and the spindle will rise to safe clearance. Before we enable the tool setter, let's make sure that the input is getting the signal. Depress the tool setter and you will see the digitize LED light up. If it doesn't light, then you will have to check your wiring connections and input settings in Mach 3. Now that we know the digitize pin is working, we can enable the tool setter. Let's pick tool two so we can observe an actual tool chain. Once the tool has been set, move the spindle out over the table bed and bring Z down to 76.2 in the work offset and check it with a 1-2-3 block. If you don't have a 1-2-3 block, use something of known thickness as a gauge. The tool needs to come down to meet the gauge block. Move it down incrementally until satisfied. 
We need to add the difference to our value for set tool offset. We had to come down 1.2 millimeters, so we will add that value to the 50 millimeters we started with. So let's grab tool one and see how we did. That looks good. We are all set to make tool changes. We will cover the setup of the tool recognition and dust cover in another tutorial.